God doesn't need anything that you have because he owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. Shalom, Rabbi Kurt Landry. Welcome to Ancient Principles and Kingdom Authority. We're talking about the Feast of Sukkot. And you're asking questions like, why is it important for Christians to celebrate Sukkot? And what does Sukkot mean? Listen, Sukkot is one of the three pilgrim feasts. There's three times a year where the Lord uh, actually calls Jewish men up to Jerusalem in the Old Testament. It was Passover and uh, Shavuot, Pentecost, and the Feast of Sukkot Tabernacles. Three times a year you appear before the Lord. And uh, that's why for us, for over 30 years, 33 years, we always bring special offerings. My family, my business plan, I tithe. I bring first fruit offerings of the increase. I bring special offerings at Passover, uh, Pentecost, and at Tabernacles. And uh, obviously, I give alms and take care of the poor. If you'll do that, money will flow to you. You don't have to worry about chasing it down. If you'll do the right thing, God will do the abundant thing. You can you cannot outgive God. You know, tithing and offerings are you're not giving it to God. There's nothing God doesn't need anything that you have because He owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns everything on earth, so He doesn't need what you have. He is asking you to tithe. He's asking you to bring an offering three times a year at these feasts because you need the blessing. And he wants to bless you. But a lot of people are asking, like, well, what, what is Sukkot? So I want to encourage you to go and uh, down. Or you can go ahead and go to KurtLandry.com and get the Fall Feast booklet. You can work through it. It's just a very easy book to work through, but it will get you into that mindset. But I can't explain it any better than I've written it right here. And the word Sukkot, it means booths in Hebrew. The term refers, refers to a temporary dwelling place that the Israelites lived in as a memorial uh, of their desert wandering following the exodus out of Egypt. Because Sukkot means booths, the festival is sometimes return, referred to as the festival of booths. Tabernacles also refers to as a dwelling place, thus the name of the Feast of Tabernacles is used in the reference to this festival. Sukkot is one of the three pilgrim feasts that in ancient Israel required all Jewish men to journey to Jerusalem with an offering to the Lord after gathering in the harvest of the other two pilgrim feasts, which are Passover and Shavuot. It is a ref it's referenced as the Feast of the Ingathering because of the agricultural significance of the feast says in exodus 34 and 22 and you shall observe the feast of weeks or the first fruits of the wheat harvest the feast of the end gathering at the year's end and in leviticus 23 39 it says also on the 15th day of the seventh month when you have gathered in the fruit of your land you shall keep the feast of the lord seven days and the first day there shall be a Sabbath rest, and on the eighth day a Sabbath rest. Shalom. The Spirit of God gives you a unique power, a power that has gifts that you can use for His glory to build up His kingdom. But what are the power gifts of the Holy Spirit? And why is it critical for you and I to understand them so that we can use them in this season to get spiritual results? In a quick guide to the power gifts of the Holy Spirit, you'll discover what the gifts are, why we need to understand them, which brings power, and the unique purpose for each one of these special gifts. So I want you right now, get your guide, begin to unlock your kingdom destiny for God's glory today when you go to and go now, kurtlandry.com forward slash nine gifts. So you're asking like, why should we celebrate the Feast of Sukkot as Christians? I think it's a time of reflection. Um, so let's talk about the booth. Let's talk about uh, what they would call in Hebrew, we, we call a temporary dwelling or a sukkah. Why would you build a sukkah? Why, why would you uh, 
uh, dwell for a week, so to say, and have that experience. So I can just take you into my family, okay? Um, at our house, Christy and I are very blessed. We have a beautiful home. It's an older home, and it's made out of rocks and big beams. Um, um, they don't make them like that anymore. And uh, But to our grandchildren from one to seven, one, three, and seven, that's Sabanana's house, okay? Sabanana's house for our grandchildren is a very safe place. They love to go to Sabanana's. And um, so for them, it's a safe place. It's, it's a place where they have sleepovers. It's a place where they have pool parties. It's it's all, it's, it's, it's a place of great joy. It's a place where we cook meals, where we celebrate Passover. Um, and uh, it's just a fun place for them to go. But one of the most fun times of the year is the Feast of Sukkot because, praise God, that Del Merritt, our dear friend, he's an intercessor here, but also a great carpenter, he's put together out of tree limbs this sukkah this uh, uh, dwelling place. And we have like a courtyard in our front yard. And so we'll build it inside of there. And Christy and Pastor Sandy will decorate it with lights and palm branches so that you can see through the roof. It's it's very exciting time. We have our picnic table out there and they'll decorate it, you know, with pumpkins and, you know, Christy, has, everything's beautiful and flowers. And now here comes the kids. And what are they going to learn about? They're going to learn about Sukkot. They've already read the children's book for, written by Kurt Landry Ministries, but <clears throat> now they're going to have a real experience they won't forget. Because they're in the courtyard and they're looking at the big rocks on the house. And here they are in this very safe place. And now we get to teach them about the dwelling place of the Lord, about how our people, the Jewish people, we were once slaves and now we're free. And we walked through the wilderness. And during that time of 40 years in the wilderness, we had dwelling places that were flimsy like this, but the Lord kept us safe and the Lord provided for us. And the Lord would tell us, if you look through the roof of the dwelling place, you'll see all the stars. Those are the same stars that God gave our father Abraham a promise to us, to all the people. He's saying, that the children of Israel, all the Jewish people, I will not let them pass away, not through a Holocaust, not through programs, not through all the times of genocide that the enemy has tried to remove us off the face of the earth. It's never worked and it never will because you can look through the palm branches and see those stars and those stars are there because God gave a promise to Abraham about our people saying, we shall be like the stars of the sky in the sky. And as long as there's a sun and a moon, Israel will not cease to become to be in a nation. And I remind him when we go to the beach, all that sand that's there, that our people will be like the sand of the sea. And that's the promise of God. And the real lesson is this, as strong and beautiful as Sabanana's house is with rocks and big beams, this Sukkot is symbolic of being able to trust the God of the universe, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he is more trustworthy than rocks and stones. He's more trustworthy than anything man can build. And that's why the scripture says in Psalm 91 that he who dwells in the secret place, which is like a tabernacle of the Most High, that he'll be safe under the shadow of his wing. And we share all of that. This is a festive time when they get to understand that God and in the flimsiness of that dwelling place is safer and more powerful than a, than a rock house. It's a very great story and you can celebrate it. And why Christians celebrate it? Scripture says that Jesus is our rock. He is our abiding place. If John 15, if you abide in me and I abide in you, you shall bear much fruit. So I think that what, that's a little bit of a long answer but that's kind of how I feel about it from my own heart. I think it's something you'll want to celebrate as well. Let's see, your next question is, what are the benefits of celebrating Sukkot? Well, I'm going to go into uh, uh, Malachi chapter 3 because it is one of the pilgrim feasts. You know, you go, three times a year, 
the Lord asks us to bring special offerings. And that's Passover, Pentecost, which is Sukkot, and Tabernacles, which is, um, I mean, Shavuot and Tabernacles, which is uh, Sukkot. So we can read about it right here. So in Malachi chapter 3, verse 4, it says, And the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord as the days of old, as in the former years. And those offerings as of ancient of days is restoring the revelation that you're receiving right now. The Lord is restoring to you the tithe to where you understand that he doesn't need your finances, but you need the blessing. He's restoring special offerings, first fruits. You hear a lot of people speaking about it because God is awakening us, preparing us for the end time battle over the finances. And the best way to be able to battle the economic uh, war that we're in right now is with biblical principles. So if you read in Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Will a man rob God? It says, You've robbed me. And you say, In which way have we robbed you? And it says, In tithes and offerings, not just tithes. So there's a lack of understanding. But the benefit of sowing a seed at Sukkoth is this. It says, I will, if you bring your tithes into the storehouse, that there'll be food in my house. And then the Lord actually allows us to be able to say, He says, and try me in this, says the Lord. So you can actually try or test him. And it says, if I will not open the windows of heaven. So the first benefit of Sukkot is opening the windows of heaven, meaning that true prosperity is being able to see what God sees and say what God says. And I will pour out such a blessing. The blessing is the networks and the ability to have favor with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that after the Lord shows you something that you actually have the people to bring it to fruition. And it says, and there will not be room enough to receive it. So the Lord's going to fill your storehouse with more than enough so that you can be a blessing to those who have lack. And then verse 11 says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So that means that spiritual warfare will be lessened because of your tithes and offering and the offering during Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles, Sukkoth. That the, while you're asking what are the benefits, the benefits are that the Lord will rebuke the devourer so that, so to say, like the canker worm and all the different grasshoppers won't eat your crop. Okay. And it goes on to say, so that they will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall your vine fair, fail to bear fruit in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations will call you blessed, and you'll be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. So those are just some of the blessings of open heaven, rebuke the devour, have more than enough, and have favor to be able to complete your assignment. And all that's good. And I praise the Lord for it. And I've been living this way. And, am, and we are, as a family and a ministry, a living testimony that that's true. But you're asking me, what is the biggest benefit of celebrating Sukkot? For me, it's about relationship. It's, to me, it's kind of like a wedding feast. Recently, the Lord gave me a word on um, full circle. And he said, things are coming full circle. And so one of the things the, the Lord did on my last birthday is our kids purchased a trip for us, for Christy and I to go back to where I was conceived, which is around the Napa Valley area. And uh, of course, I was saved from an abortion uh, because my parents couldn't marry, because one was Jew and one Catholic, and that prejudice, they, the family wouldn't allow them to marry. But then where we met was just, so to say, up the road from Napa at Lake Tahoe. And so we took a trip this last year, full circle, where we went to Napa, and then we went to Lake Tahoe. And um, the thing that was interesting about this chance meeting in the parking lot behind Harris Casino. Here's this beautiful young girl 
you know, from Oklahoma coming to get a job for the summer. She was going to OU and uh, a lot of the OU students would go out for the summer and make money to help pay tuition. So they would come to the casino and, uh, and then I, I had moved up there from Los Angeles and I was working and I had a job at that time driving a parking van and taking employees from the back of the casino to the employee parking lot, which was quite a distance. And as I was driving, I remember I looked out of the right side and I saw this beautiful strawberry blonde hair and this young girl. And I knew immediately something that there was, there was like a bolt of lightning, if you want to say it. Uh, it was, I knew that she was the one somehow. And um, the only other time I've had something that incredible happen to me was in a bathtub in 1989, where Jesus showed up and saved me, and I knew he was the one. So what happens to me at Sukkot? Personally, I got saved during Sukkot. Uh, I met my bride during Sukkot 48 years ago. And it's just a special time to be able to say to the Lord, thank you for your divine authority to choose me and to order my steps. And I want to take this week and I want to make proclamation that I will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And I thank you for this year. I thank you for the awakening of Rosh Hashanah. I thank you for what you've done at Yom Kippur, uh, forgiving and washing away my sins every day. But I want to thank you for your covenant, your marriage covenant your bridegroom. And I make a choice in Yeshua's name, and I pray you would agree with this prayer. That Father God, I would be that wise virgin. I would, so to say, go to sleep with the full armor of God, my bride's dress, my robe of righteousness. And Lord, that I'd keep my lamp full of oil, and I'd keep my whip trim. And I'd keep my ear attentive even when I sleep so that when the trumpet blasts, I will wake up and I will proclaim, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. So you ask, what is, why is Sukkot special? That's why. It's a special time to really focus on him and say, Thank you, God, for sending your son to love me enough to save me. Thank you for joining me at Ancient Principles Kingdom Authority. Share it with a friend. I've so enjoyed this time together with you and look forward to seeing you in the next session. Shalom. Shalom, Rabbi Kurt Lander here from the Holy Land here in Jerusalem. Listen, I'm so, I'm so touched after being here, being in the land. being with the children. Planting trees. We've got a farmer in South Jerusalem, such a beautiful man and family, planting trees in a strategic area where the land really needs to be taken agriculturally. Meeting with the leaders, Doran, who is the minister and the chairman of the Jewish agency, he's totally behind us. So all the doors are open. And I just want to thank you for bringing your skills, your talent, your love, your devotion to the family uh, that we call really Kurt Landry Ministries and House of David. We all come from different streams and backgrounds. The diversity makes us so, so strong. And if there was ever a city of diversity, you're looking at it right behind me. On this trip, I never would have thought that I would actually be invited at the Garden of Gethsemane into the private, quarters and into the chapel to pray. We were with the priest who was appointed by the Pope to, to be over that, that property there. Had a beautiful time sharing Jesus. It's been a very powerful trip here. This is our 47th trip for Christy and I. We haven't been here in three and a half years and so much has changed through post pandemic. There's a lot of tension. 
And if there was ever, ever a time where we needed to reach not just the church, but the lost to bring a message of peace and reconciliation, it's now. In the midst of the chaos, there's unity and we need to build that community. And God has chosen the best for this message and that best is you. So God bless you, Shalom, we love you, we're praying for you, and we appreciate you more than you ever know.